What up, Chase? Here Sarah. Now, here is my Trobat 7, where I talk about the films that turn 10, 20, 30, and 40 this week. Alright. The film celebrating their 10th anniversary, we got the Brett Ratner directed Hercules. Believe it or not, this is actually the last Brett Ratner movie he's uh, put out. That is insane to believe. I mean, Brett Ratner, if you guys don't know, uh, gave us X Men The Last Stand. Uh, he gave us the Rush Hour movies. My personal favorite, Tower Heist. Um, but obviously, there's a lot of accusations surrounding Brett Ratner, so there's that. Uh, now, if you guys remember, 2014, like 10 years ago, uh, saw the release of not one, but two Hercules movies. Back in January was the one with uh, Twilight Boy, Kellen Lutz. That was just... Now, while this one isn't as good either, this is the one with Dwayne Johnson as Hercules. Uh, you know, if you guys... It, of course, um... Falls like Hercules, uh, a self-proclaimed um, demigod and his uh, band of mercenaries as a hired to uh, lead the uh, Derrickin army against the Warlord. Uh, this Hercules one is actually a little better than the uh, Count Lutz one, but that's not really saying much. It still wasn't all that great. Uh, of course, Dwayne Johnson, listen, bro, he was born to play Hercules. Uh, he, he, he was actually pretty good as a row. Uh, he also had some other people like Rufus uh, Swell, Ian McShane, Joseph Fiennes, John Hurt. It was actually based on a graphic novel there, so there's that too. So, not, not a bad film. Uh, again, Far better than, um, like, it's not, like, as bad as Legend of Hercules. A little underwhelming, but it's still far better than Legend of Hercules, that's for sure. Alright, also turning, uh, 10 is Lucy. Now, this is an action movie, uh, directed by Luke Besson, starring Scarlett Johansson, Morgan Freeman, and it's where Johansson, uh, portrays a, uh, Natalia character, a woman who gains, uh, psychonetic, uh, abilities. When a neotropic uh, uh, psychedelic uh, drug is absorbed in her uh, bloodstream. And this movie is actually a lot of fun that had any chance to think. You know, Luke Besson, of course, did a great job of, you know, with the action here. Uh, Morgan Freeman, Scarlett Johansson were both terrific in us. Very nice little action film if you guys have seen it. Now, I know they're supposed to be doing like an, either a TV show or a sequel. I haven't heard any news about that yet, so. Anyway. Also turning uh, 10, we got Step Up or End, uh, which, yeah, of course, this is the, uh, yeah, the fifth and final Step Up movie. Uh, we had, there were so many Step Up films, I lost count. Now, they did do the TV show, but yeah, we hadn't really had a Step Up movie since 2014. Uh, now, this was directed by Trish C., who will go on to direct uh, Pitch Perfect 3. Uh, she also did some other stuff here and there. Uh, that's where, like, after struggling for, um, a year to make, uh, in Big Hollywood, Sean, played by, uh, Ryan Guzman from 911 fame, uh, dance crew gives, um, up and, um, uh, moves back to Miami, not ready to relinquish his own, uh, dream quite yet. Uh, he remains in L.A. when he, uh, hears, um, about an upcoming dance competition. Uh, now, of course, you had, uh, the late Stephen, uh, Twitch Boss was in this, Alice Stoner, it's not as good as the other Step Up movies was, but it was actually pretty cool. Like, um, of course, you know, this and um, Step Up 3D were both in 3D, so seeing, like, Step Up, you know, them just dancing um, and them just coming at us, why not? So, not even an odd thing to release in 3D, but they, they did an okay job. Alright. Uh, other films turning on um, 10, we got Very Good Girls with uh, Dakota Fanning and Elizabeth Olsen. Where two friends, uh, four for the same, um, guy, played by, uh, Boy Hobart. Not a bad little, uh, film there. Also turning, uh, 10, we got Magic in the Moonlight, directed by Woody Allen, starring, um, Emma Stone, Colin Firth, Wash Gay Harden. Uh, that's probably my least favorite Woody Allen film. I remember seeing that one. No, yeah. I, I don't mind Woody Allen films, but if I have to say what his, like, you know, worst film is, that definitely would be it. Uh, last but not least, uh, the 10-year one, that is, uh, we got A Most Wanted Man, which is sadly the last movie that, frankly, his, uh, Phil Seymour Hoffman's last film was, uh, the last Hunger Games movie, but his last starring vehicle was Most Wanted Man. 
I mean, I wasn't really too big with the film itself. I mostly saw it just to pay respect to uh, the late great uh, Felsen Hartman, who sadly passed away uh, a few months prior. Uh, now, this is where, like, an uh, escape uh, militant um, attempt to claim the inheritance uh, gives a German agent uh, the chance to lay uh, a trap for a well regarded uh, Muslim scholar. Now, you also had uh, Phil Seymour Hoffman, uh, Rachel McAdams, William Dafoe. Not a bad cast there. And Phil Seymour Hoffman really gave a terrific, uh, fine performance and gone way too soon. I mean, I. I love Phil Seymour Hoffman, you know, from, like, Capote, obviously Twister. Who doesn't love him? R.I.P. Phil Seymour Hoffman. Now, film's turning 20 this week. We got the infamous classic DC film Catwoman. Oh, boy. Starring Halle Berry as a Tyro, Sharon Stone, Benjamin Bratt, you even had Lois Griffin herself. Um, Alex Borstein was in this. I admit, this is actually a guilty pleasure of mine. It's, I would admit, it's not a good film. But I've actually seen this movie a little more than I should have. Um, but Halle Berry, let's be real, she really nailed that as Catwoman. Like, who, who did not love seeing Halle Berry in, the, in that Lair outfit? Come on. Um, now, one thing I really do appreciate about Halle Berry, if you guys don't know, this movie obviously won Halle Berry a Razzie. I can't remember what one was picture, but it, of course, won. Like, Halle Berry, of course, won her first Razzie. And normally when people who wins their Razzies barely shows up to uh, accept the award, no, Halle Berry, like, I think Halle Berry and Sandra Bullock were two of the ones I could remember that actually showed up to accept their awards. But Halle Berry actually showed uh, showed up to accept her was as she had her Oscar in her hand. Like you can actually find it too. Like just search up, you know, Halle Berry, Razzie, Catwoman. You'll probably be able to find it. Uh, she was a good sport about it too. So yeah, it, it's always funny to see how uh, celebrities even poke fun at like you know how bad their uh, film is and stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, the also turning tw um, twenty, we got the Born Supremacy. Of course, you know, the second installment of the Bourne uh, franchise starring Matt Damon. And not a bad follow-up. I mean, of course, this was a follow-up to the Bourne identity. Uh, there's still talks about another Bourne movie down the line without Matt Damon, I'm guessing. Uh, but, uh, of course, this time around, you got Bourne portrayed by Matt Damon, uh, who is once um, one involved uh, as a conspiracy involving the CIA and Operation Treadstone. You also had, like, Brian Cox, uh, Julia Stiles was also in this. Not a bad follow-up. Like, I really do quite enjoy the Bourne films. I mean, they're not, like, I don't love them as most people do, but they're not bad films. All right, also turning on, um, yeah, 20, we got A Home at the End of the World, uh, which stars the likes of Colin Farrell, Dallas Roberts, uh, and it's where, like, Bobby, played by Colin Farrell, who's a rough, um, who actually played a teenager at the time, which I still cannot believe he played a teenager there, but okay. Um, who lives in Cleveland, uh, family barn tragedy after he meets Jonathan, played by Dallas Roberts, a gay teen repressed uh, by his mother, played by Sister Spacek, and the two uh, boys become like best friends when Bobby later reunites with uh, Jonathan in uh, New York as a young man here. Uh, you also had like Robert Wright Penn uh, at the time, her name was Penn, but. Not a bad one there. I mean, of course, Colin Farrell really was... Like, at the time, he was really uh, trying to branch out as an actor. You know, the uh, first time I actually ever saw him in something was the movie Phone Booth. You know, that was actually my first introduction to Colin Farrell. Uh, but yeah, that's not a bad little film. I mean, of course, he was, like, very young at the time when he did this one. Alright. Now, films turning dir uh, dirty this week. We got the film The Client. I love The Client. You know, if, if you guys don't know much about this, it stars Susan Sarandon, Tommy Lee Jones, Brad Renfro, uh, and R.I.P. Renfro, uh, Brad Renfro, by the way. And it's based on a John Grisham uh, bestseller about a boy whose life is in danger after he stumbles um, across virtual information about a politician's murder. His lawyer is the only person offering protection from the uh, unwanted attentions of the mob and FBI. Uh, you also had, like, Brad, Bradley Whiffer was in this, Ozzy Davis. It's a really nice, um, you know, crime-based uh, story, a nice legal-based uh, film. You know, Susan Sarandon, Brad Renfro's really great. 
I believe this is actually Brad Raffle's first film, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he would go on to uh, star in other really uh, cool stuff, too. And he, sadly, you know, Brad will, would also uh, pass away in, I believe, 2008. So, R.I.P. Uh, he, he was a really good uh, young actor. It's a shame, it's a shame uh, that his career came to, to a very um, sad end. Uh, but here he really had promises. Uh, now, Brad Raffer was also in that movie, Bully, by the way. So he's in some really cool stuff. Gone way too soon. Alright, also turning uh, dirty. We got, oh boy, the Rob Reiner classic, North. You know, I love Rob Reiner. You know, I, obviously people always talk tr trash about him because of how political he is. But take the politics stuff aside. Rob Reiner is a guy, you know, obviously think of him from one the family and all, but he is a guy who gave us movies such as Stand By Me, Princess and uh Total Set Princess The Princess um Bride, uh Misery. He's put out some terrific stuff. Not everything he's put out turns to go. And that is what was said about North. North is maybe his worst film he's ever put out. Uh, this has a good cast, too. You had the likes of Elijah Wood, uh, Bruce uh, Willis, John Lovis, Dan Aykroyd, Reba McIntyre, a very young Scott Johansson, Ben Stein, John Ritter, Alan Arkin. I mean, talk about terrific cast here. If you guys don't know much about North, uh, it's where North, played by Elijah Wood, a talented and uh, bright kid, who, um, I believe this was actually like Elijah Wood's earliest film that uh, but his uh, mom, played by Julie Louis Dreyfus, and dad, played by um, Jason Alexander, obviously Seinfeld co star. So, yeah, the Seinfeld co stars, um, you know, pretty much did. Uh, I mean, come on, you have uh, Elena, Elena, and uh, George Costanza reuniting in this. So, what what could you ask for there? Uh, and they are um, preoccupied with other things in the in their. Uh, you know, lives, leaving him a large, largely annoyed, advised by a mysterious man played by Bruce Willis, who pops up on occasion, North decides to legally separate himself from his parents and goes on a search across the globe uh, for his for the ideal mother and father. And he meets, like, you know, pretty much other people along the way. It's, it's awful. One of Rob Reiner's worst films. Like, if you guys never seen, like, Roger Eber and Cisco's uh, review for this, I highly recommend it. it. Their reviews are hilarious to watch about this. But, yeah, North is... Ooh, God. I believe the score could be rats. It's sure fun on a second. Alright. Uh, also turning um, dirty, we got Lassie, which is a... Uh, like a remake of the iconic uh, TV show from, like, the 1940s or 50s. Who doesn't love Lassie, right? Uh, this, of course, had, like, Tom Gary... Uh, former Supergirl herself, Helen Slater, a very young Michelle Williams. So you had some cool cast members in this one. All right, film turning 40, we got the Prince classic, Purple Rain. You know, Purple Rain was, of course, the movie that really put, I guess you could say really put Prince on the map for most people. Uh, obviously, his most iconic music um, is, well, the title film. Uh, I mean, Prince was, was a living legend, you know, uh, one of the most iconic mus musicians of all time of that uh, decade, and Purple Rain is just so iconic. Uh, he, they also did like he also did other films like Ch um, Under the Chair Moon and all, but nothing beats Purple Rain. Like if you guys never seen Purple Rain, highly recommend that one. All right. Now also turning. Uh, now, also turning 40, uh, we got Meat Boys 2, which is a uh, sequel to the uh, Bill Murray classic, which I believe the first Meat Boys was actually Bill Murray's first feature, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Meat Boys 2, they did Meat Boys 3 for the sequels are terrible. There's also the Chicha Chong movie, The Corson of Brothers, which is a parody adaptation of the Alexis Dumas novel. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love Chicha Chong, right? Um... Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, at the time, Chi Chong was very popular with, like, Up in Smoke, and also, there are some iconic, uh, like, stone, like, 
they, they were pretty much, let's say, the Jay and Silent Bob before Jay and Silent Bob was a thing, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's also pretty cool how in the new uh, season of that nine show, you got Kevin Smith playing the son of Tommy Chong's character, which that's pretty cool. Uh, but that's pretty much it, by the way. Uh, you know, let me leave you guys. Which of these films stand out to you the most? Uh, to me, the tenure one is actually going to go to uh, it's going to go to the movie Lucy. That's definitely the better one on that. Uh, the twenty one, even though it was a terrible film. Uh, I'm just gonna say Catwoman. I probably should. The probably thing was be, uh, say, uh, you know, the Born Super Messy, but I, I have a little soft spot for Catwoman, you know, so I gotta choose Catwoman. Uh, the dirty one is gonna go to The Client, and the Foy one is gonna go to Purple Rain. Anyway, uh, drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for one occasion. This is Henry Sign.